day. I've been putting this off for a very long time. This is the room in question I'm going to tackle today. Oh my gosh, I am still saying it with a little hesitation in my voice. It's such a big project. Things that I've never done before. I have spent hours upon hours like just doing everything to try to make this room magical and I don't even know why I'm overthinking it and overdoing it because at the end of the day like it's a bedroom we just need to get this thing set up it's Wolfgang's bedroom it's his first like bedroom the addition is finally done so now he has a space all on his own he's out of our bedroom not really because we co-sleep but I have found some really unique pieces. That's part of the thing. So when I do like bedroom makeovers or whatever, I try to find unique pieces, vintage pieces. That's the theme for his room is like, I don't even really know what to call it. Vintage boy. <laughs> I don't know. It could be for a girl too, but I was trying to find some really cool pieces for his room. And I think I succeeded. I don't exactly know how I'm going to set this room up, but I figured Let's just start and I'll figure it out from there. I don't even know where to start. I guess I'll show you some of the cool finds and then we'll put them together as we go along. But the very first project I need to tackle is the beadboard. I know, who am I? If we've met and you saw my wallpaper experience, this is the update on the wallpaper <laughs> experience. <laughs> I initially thought, oh, let me do beadboard and then I'll put wallpaper on the top of the wall. I don't know who I think I am. I have, I'm not capable of this type of interior decorating slash design slash actually doing it. I'm not a carpenter. I'm not a painter. Just a regular gal wanting her boy's bedroom to look super cute. And I think at the end of the day, it's not gonna be perfect. Lo let's lower the expectations here for a minute, but it will be. Amazing. So let me show you some pieces. I found this secondhand. It's actually custom. The This little tiny crib is gonna go and this Montessori style bed will come, but it's actually fitted for a toddler, like toddler size bed, like a normal crib size. I think I'm gonna end up putting this in the closet. We'll get there. I had to order a mattress, if you can believe. That's gonna go. That, uh, uh, yeah, it needs to stay. I got a really cool rug I'm excited to unwrap. I have a plant in here, who the heck? I got some really cool knickknacks from the thrift store. I grabbed this beautiful bookshelf secondhand. It's actually Pottery Barn. It's really heavy, solid wood, looks great. I'm undecided on whether or not I'm going to refinish it. I actually kind of like it the way that it is. I got some curtains on, oh my gosh. Got some picture frames down here. Okay, so the paint swatch is gone, but let me grab it for you. These are vinyl, not vinyl, velvet curtains that I just grabbed off of Amazon. I just saw a color blue and I, it was the right size that I needed. So let me show you the color swatch for the paint that I picked out. I actually got this paint. Uh, in this color, if you can see, it's kind of, I think the color is vanilla mocha, something like that. I could be wrong, I can't really remember. But that's going to be for all the other walls and the top of the wall, but for the B board, I got Sherwin-Williams. Oh gosh, I don't know, let me grab the swatch. Also for venturing into the antique shop that is my bedroom, I got him this really precious like roll top desk. A lot of this stuff is gonna go in his room, so um, also a lot of it's Easter. I, oh, and then that Christmas, I don't wanna talk about it, okay? We'll clear out some of this, but mostly the desk. I am going to do something special with the desk, and I found the paint swatches. So I have Sherwin-Williams. Oh, love this color. Okay, so I was very heavily influenced by Pinterest, obviously, that's like been my life lately. I'm trying to turn it right side up, not that it really matters. But I found this color blue. I was gonna go green maybe, and then I thought, no, I don't know. So I ended up landing on blue and I couldn't be happier. Initially, I found a color called Debonair. I fell in love with it. Then I got to the store and the swatch looked so light, like baby blue, and I said, that's not my vibe, okay? So I found this one, Smoky Azurite. So that's gonna be the color of the bead board, and then up top and the rest of the walls are going to be the color Vanilla Mocha. And if you're wondering why I'm saying up top and the rest of the walls is because I gotta start slow with the bead board, okay? Be like in my head, I thought, yeah, I'm gonna bead board the room. It's too big of a project. I had to narrow it down. I had to like condense my efforts because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to actually pull this off. So I'm only going to be bored this wall and that wall. 
seems like the easiest, I say easy, but really I'm like, oh my God, I've been putting it off because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. And then if that looks good, and if I'm able to do it, then I'll think about doing the rest of the room, which is, I just, we'll get there when we get there. And then I'm also thinking when I'm painting, I've seen these like color drenched rooms and I'm thinking like, do I want to color the doors? I don't think I'm going to, but it is um, a thought that's going around in my mind. But for now, I think I'm going to keep them white. I don't know what I have to do first. Oh my God. And I got some of the coolest artwork, again, inspired by things that I saw on Pinterest. It's Smokey the Bear. Come on. Oh my gosh, the whole reason I got the swatch was to show you this. So when these curtains came in, I was like, oh, I don't know if that's the right color. I couldn't have matched these curtains to a color better if I tried. Like, let me get my shadow out of the way. I mean, come the heck on. Incredible. Well done, snaps for me. I guess I'll give you an overview of like the before. <laughs> Listen, even if I did like the bare minimum today, I mean, it would be better than what it is right now, right? Okay, so here's this wall, this wall. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put the majority of the artwork. And then we've got this wall over here. Ooh, ah. And then the window wall. Mostly excited about the drapery. I will eventually be putting built-ins in the closet. I will, okay, I say built-ins. We might do Ikea. There will be a secret door because right on the other side of this wall is Wentworth's closet. This closet was not here when we bought the house. This was an add-on. The original closet was part of that hallway, but now this was like the best option to cut Wentworth's closet in half because he had a walk-in closet. And now they still have a substantial size closet. It's just not a walk-in. So we're trying to figure out logistics around that. But until then, I think I will move the, cha the diaper changing station in here. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's what I'm gonna do right now to see how I feel about it. By the way, everyone makes makeover, room makeover seem so simple. What the heck? I can't tell you how many hours I have spent at Lowe's, how much math I've done trying to figure out everything I need and what I need for the beadboard and the top and then the nails and all the, I'm done mentally. All right. Well, RIP his wife's warmer because there's no plug in this closet. Although we could create one, I just don't. Summertime is coming up and it'll be fine. I also got this hamper from the thrift store too, eight bucks. It's like amazing, amazing. I want me to put it here, all right. Clearly I'm in need of some shelves and storage, but also not really. The only storage I need are like wipes and diaper storage. And honestly, we're minimalists over here, right? Hey, guess what I got for painting? A Couple of upgrades from when I did the office. I got an edger and I got a long extension pole. I went with Lowe's uh, yesterday with Avelina and she, oh, did I break it already? Oh. She recently helped one of her friend's moms paint her small shop and she said they used one of these edgers and I was like, that is genius because I've been over here like with my steady hand trying to get a good edge on it. So I feel like this will really help me out. And uh, I do need a ladder. I'm just gonna pop the paint open and start. I was looking for the stuff for my floors. I can't find it anywhere. Literally, it's been 20 minutes, I'm over it. I'll probably have to spend 20 more minutes like cleaning paint off the floor, but that's okay. So Sherwin-Williams isn't this fancy, but the, uh, who's, who's here? The Marquis, the Bear Marquis, they have these, Twistable tops. Oh gosh, is it twistable? Oh my heck! He forgot to give me the little thing that opens it. <laughs> okay, it's not as cool. It comes with a little doohickey, supposed to come with one, uh, and you pop it on there. Well, I can't show you. Life goes on. It's gonna have to do it the old fashioned way. All right, are you ready to see? Ooh, wow, it's white. <laughs> but it's creamy, right? Vanilla mocha, if you will. I already got paint on the floor. Crap. Crap indeed, you guys. And that was not the first time I said that. 
four letter word. Listen, I was pleasantly surprised how well this edger worked and how seamless it was. So I feel like that saved me a lot of time. But when I tell you I had five hours of footage to condense down because these are the things no one talks about. How time consuming it is to paint a room. Like the rolling part, that's the easy part. That's the part that everyone wants to do because the most time consuming part is essentially like prepping the rest of the room. And I didn't even do a proper job prepping. Like I should have laid stuff on the floor. I guess I can count that in as my 20 minutes of looking for this stuff to lay down and all the mistakes that happened like that. I don't know what just happened, but probably I glopped a bunch of paint on the floor and had to, you know, clean up, get a wet rag and clean that up. How many rags did I waste with this project? really only a couple, like a towel and then a couple of rags, which were fine because we had like some garbagey towels, like project towels, I guess. And now these are officially my painting pants, which I couldn't find my other painting pants from the last uh, room makeover, the office. And really, I don't even know how it happened, but I didn't get any blue paint on me from the office, but I did get gray paint on me. I can't even tell you when I used gray paint wearing those pants. So I don't know how that happened. But these pants also now have paint on them, so I'm saving these to be my painting pants, but hopefully I never paint anything again in my entire existence of living because I find exactly zero, zero joy in doing it. These people, I watch a lot of makeover videos and they're like, oh, painting is so therapeutic and zen and I can't, nope, not for me. I can hire those people to paint my house. How about that? Because... The whole time I was like, oh my God, the amount of time it takes. Oh my gosh. And then that, what the heck just happened? What is this? It broke in my hands. I didn't even know that was possible. Not only that, but there was paint all over the floor. So again, I had to spend that time. I said, what crap? Or maybe I said no, or maybe I said something inappropriate. But those are my thoughts and feelings involved when painting. <laughs> I did my best. Alex came in and helped me roll, but I was just like sweating. First of all, sweating. Second of all, uh, you know what? Would I rather be wallpapering is all I'm going to say. And the answer to that is I would rather be painting. So I guess there's my positive outlook on it. And the most satisfying part is rolling it. But you know what happens when you roll it? Like little spits. It spits at you a little bit. And those little, it's like when you have a toothbrush and it's wet and you kind of rub your thumb against the bristles, that. It's, how, you know, how when you're painting, how you're able to get the snowy effect. If you've ever done that, if you're an artist, hey, welcome. Uh, that is what I'm talking about. That's what happens when you roll paint on a wall. Oh, and the amount of clips that are blurry in here, I just, I cut most of them out, but I kept that one into for proof that like Alex was helping me um, mostly along that back wall. He did most of the rolling there. And oh my goodness, you know what helped so much is this extendable paint roller. That was fantastic. So I didn't have to drag the um, like the ladder around with me and that ladder was questionable anyway. <laughs> there was so many times when I was on that ladder doing the edge work on the ceiling I thought this might I might fall. <laughs> I just kept thinking, if I fall, how could I land safely? You know, like, and by the way, don't try to hold your body up with your arms. Uh, made that mistake when I was in cheerleading and broke my dang arm. Actually, didn't break it. I bent it. I bent it because my bones are so dang strong. It didn't even break it. Just bent. Anyway, you're supposed to land on your, uh, on your back, like your shoulder back, you just flop that way. And that's like the safest way to do it. Apparently don't quote me. That's just how in my mind I thought that would probably be the best option right here. I think they teach you how to fall, um, you know, in martial arts and stuff like that. But unfortunately I never took that. So that's, that's the best cheerleading is my best hack for that. They teach you kind of how to fall, but really mostly after you break your limbs. is <laughs> they're, they're like, well, this is the better way to do it. Okay. Anyway, got the painting mostly done. Thank goodness. And I say mostly, and I'm not even halfway done with the paint. And then our magical neighbor, our wonderful neighbor, we couldn't even think about moving uh, because 
we have realized the reason why it took us a year to find this house is because we were just waiting for this exact house to open up so we can have the neighbor that we have, right? He is so amazing. He came over and helped so much with this project and really every project we have around the house. He's incredible. And he... Uh, had a stud finder out. So he went along and found all of the studs. If you're wondering how to do that, it like tells you when the outside of the stud is. So you mark it and then that's the stud. So I didn't know. I thought it was just like, oh, here's this. So apparently that's how it's done. So we marked all of the studs. I took painter's tape and along the floorboards, I marked where the studs were because obviously his markings were going to get covered up by the beadboard. And then I took my measuring tape. The rule of thumb here is measure twice, cut once, and I'm measuring to cut out the outlets. And when I tell you I measured four times and still made mistakes, that's just the part of being a beginner. Progress is being made, slow but sure. Uh, the windows are wide open, so you can enjoy the outside air and noises. Anyway, the bead board, I'm hoping this turns out really well. I'm kind of pumped about it, but kind of like, I measured that like 500 times and it's probably still going to be off. This is so outside of my realm of comfort. Our neighbor brought over his nail gun compressor so we can nail these things to the wall. He brought his stud finder over. We're trying to find all the studs. This wall is just kind of crazy, so I did my stud finder this way ended up being the best way. <laughs> That's how I was gonna do it anyway. So I noted where all the studs are. Hopefully this is a success and I feel like I'm gonna wanna finish the whole room because now that I'm envisioning, I'm like, I need to do the desk over here, but the color of the desk is gonna clash with the wall. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but it's gonna be great. And what we're gonna do now is put some beadboard on the wall. This is what my dreams are made of. I've been wanting to do this forever. Beadboard wainscoting, let's do it. I am quickly learning that I am needing to hone in on my skills of becoming a DIYer, and a lot of that has to do with measuring <laughs> the amount of times I have goofed up with the measurements along the wall, just measuring the beadboard where those needed to be cut, and I thought, okay, well, you know, user error on my end could be user error on when I went to Lowe's and had him cut the board. He could have done it shy. It could be the board. You know, listen, there are probably 10 variables and eight of those are probably my fault. <laughs> you know what? I'm a beginner and beginners are going to make mistakes and that's how we learn. You live and you learn and you know, you get better with every project that you do. Rome wasn't built in a day and I'm just trying to give myself grace because tackling a project like this it takes a lot of guts. So if you're holding back and you're like, oh, I don't know, just know, well, maybe you won't make mistakes, but I made more than I would like to admit. Like, okay, so I was measuring all the outlets and on the last outlet, um, our neighbor was cutting them all out. His name is Doug. And I, you know, we were cutting them out and I said, Doug, I think this, because every measurement I took was slightly too small. And I was like, oh, I'd rather be too small than too big. And the last one I said, I think these are my best measurements yet. And it was off by like two inches. It was horrible. And speaking of being off by two inches, uh, this board that I cut, I don't know what the heck happened here. Thankfully, I had another board. I brought home the excess and Doug again was able to save the day. He's the real MVP of the day. He brought over everything we needed and he cut the board to size. So that was really helpful because he, I guess he had like some kind of saw that was, uh, the, I don't know. I don't know what I would have done because even at Lowe's, they say, oh, they only cut it halfway or something to be, so I would be able to fit in my car. And thankfully the guy at Lowe's, because I asked, you know, because first you have to ask for someone to go down there to cut it. And then the cutter guy comes. And so I asked him like, hey, are you able to cut it to my measurements or are you only able to cut it in half? And he said, technically, it may, I may be outing him. I don't know. Listen, they need to change their rules for people like us who want to do projects, but don't have the proper equipment. Like I don't have a table saw. Do you know what I mean? So I was really thankful that the guy at Lowe's was, you know, took the time with me and cut it to measurement. So that was really you know, a lot of people, it takes a village is what they say. So after this, you see, like I was trying to find a stud at that moment in time. And so I made several holes in the beadboard, but you know what? I covered it up with this like 
wood filler, whatever the heck this is. It goes on pink and when it dries, it dries white. So, you know, you can paint over it or do whatever the heck. You're supposed to like sand it down if you need to, but I was really just putting in holes. So I went over it with a, a rag and got the excess off and that was good enough for us. But I went in with wood filler, filled the holes of all of uh, the nail gun. We put the top board on, which is really floorboard, which, okay, so here's another dilemma. Apparently they sell... I don't know what it's called. <laughs> Top of beadboard is what I Googled. And it has like a half inch little lip on it. Well, they only sell one kind at Lowe's and it was really thin, uh, maybe not thin, but short. And I wanted a wider one, you know, a taller one. And so I didn't get that one. So I ended up just getting random floorboard. It doesn't even match what I had on the bottom. It was just like plain and it didn't have divots in it. It wasn't decorative. I just wanted something plain Jane. Okay, I don't know why. Don't ask me. I just didn't want to think about anything anymore. And so I we nailed that in. We just measured, made, made sure that was right. I made those cuts correctly. I think, I don't know, don't ask me. I don't know how that happened. And then I'm just going in with this filler. <laughs> what's it called? A sealant, Alex, um, what's it called? Okay, Alex Flex is the one I have. It's called Crown Mold Premium Molding Trim Seal, Sealer, Sealant, something like that. I don't know, the picture I took is cut off. So I went in with that. I filled up, filled in all the gaps between the two beadboards uh, meeting together and then the top trim meeting that together and all the like little gaps. And this just really is a great finisher piece for the project. By the way, if you didn't know, this is like, I, in my opinion, the easy way to beadboard. There is a traditional way where you take like actual pieces of wood <laughs> like connect them to I'd listen it was just too much for me I spent a long time going through YouTube videos trying to figure out what the easiest way to do it just like the most not only affordable but like beginner I guess the most beginner way to do it and th this was the best thing and I still made a million mistakes opening up this blue I initially thought is this the color like does everyone have that thought and then I put the you know paint swatch up to it is literally exactly the same color as it should be but listen I don't know if everyone has that thought when they open up like the can of paint is this what I picked out is this, is this it is it gonna dry a little deeper I don't know so uh it was actually the perfect color loved it and a lot of people, what I saw is they went in first because the beadboard has a lot of grooves in it. They went in with like a brush to get into the middle grooves. Well, first of all, this paint roller was the same one I used for the cream and I had washed it so it was a little wet. And the beadboard itself is slick, this one. Um, I don't know if they sell it in a raw wood. I guess that would have been, uh, it would have been worth like, looking into I guess but I had already done all of this effort and just don't tell me if it does exist <laughs> because at this point uh, what's done is done but I it did need two coats when I was initially putting it on I thought there's no way this is gonna stick like did I need to sand this first before I painted don't tell me right now it's fine I can rub my hands on it it doesn't like nick the paint off so I guess it all worked out in the end and the whole inch or two gap that I had here actually looks fine once I painted it you can barely tell the imperfections exist and they definitely exist um you know my kids are very funny they come in and they're like oh it looks great it's so preppy but what's this like they'll point out the imperfections it's so funny and I'm like just don't stare at it too long and it looks great right it's my first big project like this, so I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. I actually love this color. I was second guessing it the whole time. Like, did I, did I pick out the right, you know, color for the top? Maybe I could have gone a different, maybe I could have been like more white, but I wanted it more creamy because I knew it would, you know, have to go in the rest of the room. And I don't know. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what uh, you would have done differently color wise or whatnot. But the second coat always goes on I say always like I'm such a pro um the second coat is a lot faster than the first coat going on um so I'll say that if you're like wow this is so time consuming which it is time consuming and tedious I had this was like late at night once all the other kids went to bed I gave the paint 
some time to dry in between coats, but it was super dry, maybe a couple of hours. Maybe I should have waited longer. I don't really care. Google says like four to six hours. Who the heck has time for that? This literally took me all day just to paint the room and put the beadboard up. So I can't even believe how time consuming a project like this is. So this is the next day. Still more projects to come. This desk, and now I'm second guessing this. I second guessed everything. I'm very fickle. Clearly, um, I don't know anything and I'm useless. So I have this desk and it's super dang cute. I literally squealed when I found it. It's the perfect size. <laughs> Look at him. Oh my gosh. His desk is just the best. It's a roll top desk. And it wasn't exactly the color I was envisioning. I could have kept it this color. I think it would have worked in his room, but it was a little off. I wanted it either, now, and now you can see like a proper, like it was very orange, you know, yellowy orange, that kind of thing. So I guess redwood maybe, is this cherry wood? I don't really know, but it's giving, you can see. Different color than what I was wanting. So I knew I wanted to strip it. I used Easy Off to do that. Same thing that I did to the mirror in my office. It just strips it. I know they sell a, an actual stripper. It's like orange something. You have to paint that on and then like put saran wrap over it. A little more invasive than what I was looking for. I needed something quick and easy and this fits the bill. Love Easy Off. I got the blue cap this time, which is no fume or low fume. It wasn't very strong, but I obviously still did it outside. I sprayed the entire thing. I let it sit for an hour. And then you want to come in with a hose with some water and a scrub brush. So I didn't know right away. I just thought, oh, I'll just scrub it off. Well, it needed to be wet. <laughs> it was like completely dry sitting in the Florida sun. And it was pretty warm that day. So it dried fairly quickly. So I just went in with a hose. I wet it first and then it came off like butter. Smooth like butter, yeah. Something in undercover, yeah. I love this. It's such a quick, easy time hack if you're looking for something quick and easy. <laughs> to like take the, you know, just give it that rustic feel, beachy feel of you. I don't really know what to call it, but it just strips the, what's that? When you put stuff on wood, what's that called? Not a sealant, but a, when you color the wood, a stain. It takes the stain off. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll, you know, have this match the Pottery Barn bookshelf that I have. It's a very dark stain. So that's an option I have. I was doing this very, very quickly because we literally needed to leave in 15 minutes. So that's kind of why I'm rushing and I did a poor job. But after I scrubbed this, I let it sit and just dry and it completely transformed the color of this thing. Take a okay, look. here she is. I brought her inside and I was rushing to get this finished. So it's not perfect. I thought about like doing more to it, doing another coat and I think that would fix it. Also, I broke the roll top, which is like ugh, mistakes happen. But um, yeah, I figured if I were like, this is beautiful, but the rest of it could look like that if I took my time with it, but obviously it didn't take my, to take my time. So like the top of this seat, but you can see like the darker spots everywhere else where I was kind of lazy with it, mostly because I was rushing. <laughs> I shouldn't say lazy, I was just rushing. So I don't know, I kind of like the rustic look of this and I could always come back to it and do more, but for now, you know, I think I'm gonna call that a day and move on. To decorating the rest of his room, this is what the fin final coat looks like. Oh wow, it's really echoey in here. I kind of do feel like it's giving off nursery vibes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's different than I was initially anticipating, but deep breaths, right? I gotta put the face plates back on. I'll get to doing that, but I think I'm just gonna start putting furniture around here, and I don't even know where things are gonna go yet, so I just have to figure it out, and I feel like it'll all come together in the end. Right here, this is the perfect example of why nothing needs to be perfect. He has already christened his walls. We were coloring, and I had to use the bathroom, and literally, 15 seconds it takes me to urinate. <laughs> Amy came in here. Okay, so we're just gonna wipe it up. No big deal. Oh, it is kind of a big deal. What is this permanent? All right, we gotta get it off. Hold on, hold on here. Yeah, 
Yes. Now on to the fun stuff, the decorating. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy to be at this step. I feel like this is the fun part. <laughs> and the it's like fun on both ends, looking for the pieces, shopping for the pieces, and then getting to implement those pieces and putting them in the room. So this bed frame we got secondhand, I told you, and it was custom. And when Alex went to pick it up, the lady who was selling it was, you know, obviously, I guess, upset to see it go, but happy to see it come to a good family. I guess I don't really know, but I am so, I love it so much. It's like a Montessori style bed is if you're searching for it online, they're actually very expensive. So I was happy to find one secondhand and um, I, Ikea, I feel like sells something similar where it's like kind of on the floor, but gives it the bed a little lift with the bed frame. And so it kind of like grounds it in a way, like makes it a statement piece without being up off the floor. So I am just always worried that my kids are going to roll off of the bed. It hasn't happened, knock on wood, man, but it's just like a big fear of mine. And so you know, closer to the floor, the better. I could have got a traditional toddler bed, but this one just seemed way cooler. So we'll see how it works out. And then I'm putting the blinds up. Again, this took me, it's so time consuming putting this stuff together. It took me probably 30 minutes to like measure. And again, I probably measured incorrectly because these blinds, well, okay, I will say when I ordered the curtains, I keep saying blinds, they were a five inches shorter than what I wanted to order because you're supposed to, you know, hang the curtains as close to the ceiling, right? Does that also apply to high ceilings? Like, I don't really know the rules, but I feel like that's a rule. So I hung them high, but then they look like high waters. There's like five inches on the bottom where I'm missing. Alex is like, uh, you know, take out the bottom seam. I don't know, but I think it looks fine the way that it is. And I actually love the way that it turned out. I think the curtains really added a lot to the room, but I love this. Like the kids were playing in the room and just look, it's my little PSA to you. Like you don't need all the fancy toys. She was literally using face plates as beds for her little dolls. <laughs> like so cute. I got this sailboat. Oh, that one. So much inspiration. Like, are we going for a pirate's theme? I guess we are in Tampa, Florida. So like Gasparilla and all that good stuff. So we could go the, you know, the ships and boats and all of that. I found these and I don't know. I just thought they were cool. So I wanted to put them in his room, but I found that one. And apparently it was like someone either painted it or made it. It said made by. So, and it was the year 1960 something in the sixties. So I just thought that was fun to add in here. Just gives, give some stuff new life. And then the sailboat Wentworth was like, was that in a bottle? I was like, I don't think so. The bottle would have been pretty big, but I found that one and that's been a hit amongst the children to be playing with too. And then this rug, oh my heck, look how amazing this is. I love it. I saw, um, I can't remember where I got this. Amazon, I'm pretty sure. They sell different ones other places for a lot more money, but this one was very similar and at least half the price. It's still expensive because like it's a rug, but it's very, very good quality. I recently got a rug for my front entry and it was the worst thing I've ever bought in my life. It was, the quality was zero, negative four. So do not recommend. And, uh, but this one is actually great quality. It's a great pile size and it feels really nice and it looks really great too. So I love it. This is one of the pieces of artwork inspired by, you know, things that I saw on Pinterest. I was trying to find, you know, similar things like that. I saw some things on Etsy, but then I also found a lot on Amazon too. So that was a great find. And the best thing about Amazon is that it comes, the shipping is like really fast and they'll never cancel your order. Well, I say never, but it's very rare, but sometimes I order stuff on Etsy and Mercari, or, you know, different places. And then my order will be canceled and I'll be waiting for a week for it. And then I'm a week behind on wanting that thing, you know? So anyway, I'm kind of just walking around a room, the room. I don't know where to put things, just trying to figure everything out like the logistics of, okay, I got these really cute things like long live boyhood. How adorable is that? Again, saw a banner like this on Pinterest and I tried to go to her website to buy it, but it wasn't there anymore. Thankfully, I found something very similar on Amazon. So that was really cool for me to find. Smokey the Bear, I found that I want to say on Amazon too. They had a few different ones. Always a great option to just find a picture of something and then print it out yourself if people are trying to sell it for an astronomical price or if it's unavailable anywhere else or if you're wanting to do something, 
you know, if you get inspired by something and you don't see it anywhere else then like kind of do it yourself and make it your own. So that's a good idea too. Oh my gosh. And then hanging this thing was a whole to do. And, but I love this artwork. I love the blues in it. It just kind of ties the room together. I do need to like take the back off and kind of fix it because the artwork itself is a little crooked, but I'll live with it for now. I think it looks fine. I found this thrifted that I think it's a painting or picture of Venice. And I just thought that was really cool. I found that for $2 at the thrift store. Maybe it was a dollar if it was half off. I don't really know. And then just random little things. I just wanted it to be like bugs and and the feet prints of animals. And, you know, just that is tin. And it's the animal footprints, like wildlife footprints. I just thought it was very cool. And Smokey the Bear up there, just given like old school vibes, but also cool and funky and fun and fresh and boyhood and all that good stuff. Oh, and then I wanted to try to cover up all of these outlets. We had a TV here. Um, I think the old owners had something there because there are a million holes in the wall. I don't know what they were doing there, but clearly it was something large and heavy and they were having trouble. So I'm just trying to cover up as many holes in the wall as possible. But um, here is the final reveal. I'm always surprised. I say always as if I do this often. No, this room and the office so far, I am pleasantly surprised at how everything comes together and it just looks so amazing. Uh, once it's all finished, it's always a process to get here. And, you know, while I'm doing it, especially when I was painting, I just thought, oh, the agony. But once it's all finished, you know, the joy in my heart. And I'm just so happy and grateful that he has this room and, you know, he's going to grow up here. And obviously his style will change as he gets older. He'll get his own style. But for now, I am allowed to style his bedroom however I choose. <laughs> and oh, I just think it came out so darling. Just little touches here and there. Pinterest is great. Is his bedroom Pinterest worthy? No, there's paint all over the floor I have to scrub up. But it is amazing and I love it and it's good enough for us. And I'm just so happy with the way that it all turned out, especially the beadboard. Love everything about it. I hope it inspired you. I am finally finished. I say with a question mark, it's good enough. I feel like little touches along the way will really, you know, obviously add to his bedroom. But I think what I've done so far, I mean, obviously it looks way better than it used to. Love the rug, love the open space for a bunch of free play. I love the collage up there, loving the bed. The bedding needs some work, but we'll get there. <laughs> I need to throw a pillow on there. So I added a pillow and a little stuffed animal to his bed. I think he's gonna love it. I thought about doing a lot with this back wall. I even envisioned putting this collage over here and then putting like some toys down here or maybe even moving this bookshelf to that wall. But honestly, I even thought about putting a table there. I don't know, the possibilities are endless. Don't look outside of the room because still a lot of effort on my end to like put everything away. But the desk, oh my gosh, laughing did not come out as great as I hoped. I think it, it just needs a bit more work on my end, but the drapings, the drapery is awesome. I think I hung that picture way too high, but I'll get over it. I love the plant. I love all of the toy storage over here. The boat will ensure that those windows never get opened <laughs> fully, but that's fine for now. And um, they've been playing with the boat a lot, so I doubt it's going to stay up there, but it does look fun for now. We'll see how long that plant stays alive, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out. It's a lot of effort. Oh my gosh, the bead board. Can we even talk about that? It, was it worth it? Mm, should I do the rest of the room? I don't know. I feel like the... The curtains really tie in the blue. Is it necessary to do the rest of the room? And I don't even know if you noticed, but this has like hardly any blue. I guess the kind of like gray blue over here. I thought it was way more blue, but it is a lot more green. Yeah, there's an accurate representation of it. I love it. I don't think it looks horrible. I love the pattern it brings out. And yeah, there's that. I'm happy to be done. Now, even like looking at this back wall, like wow, it's so bare, but I'm a minimalist, so there's that. <laughs> 
I'm just kidding. I know he's going to enjoy the space because they've already been chomping at the bit to just play in here, which is really all that it's about. I'm happy to make progress. I'm happy that he has a room of his own. Oh my gosh, such a long time coming. Gratitude all around. Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me as I put this room together. Who's next is the real question. All right, time for dinner. I'll see you next time. Bye.